Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my garage. Uh, on today's episode, we are finally going to put an end to that god awful squeak. Um, show you what I got here. This is the, the parts from Ford Service Bulletin, uh, the updated tensioner. Uh, it's actually got a ribbed and a smooth, so that way it will pull on the belt and push on it at the same time. And then we got the new uh, updated belt. It's a different length because of the new belt routing. So. Uh, Today we're going to get that installed. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You just got to pull the alternator out. You got to get the alternator bracket off. The modification we got to do to the bracket and then these new parts should go right back on. So uh, let's get to it. So we're not really going to need a whole bunch of tools to do this job. Um, really all we're going to do is we have to get the alternator unbolted. So those three bolts, we're going to move this heater hose just out of the way. Take this wire clip off. We're going to take the belt off completely. And then uh, it's four bolts down in here, and we're just going to pull this whole bracket out. And once we get it out, everything's going to be done on the bench, and then the, re the install is a reversal. So um, I'm going to do this the not approved way, so don't, don't do it the way I'm going to do it. Um, I'm, I'm going to advise you guys to disconnect your batteries because i got to take the alternator out. You're going to be playing with live electricity. And this wire right here is straight off of the battery. So this has constant power with a lot of current behind it. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to cheat it and I'm, I'm going to undo it because I have a, uh, remote fuse here and my alternator wiring goes right to here. <clears throat> so all I have to do is just disconnect that and then all the power between the battery and the alternator goes away. Um, again, that's something I added in. It should be tied off your starter solenoid. You can take it off there if you want, but, uh, again, if you're going to use this as a tutorial, disconnect your batteries. All right, so with the 15 millimeter socket, we're just gonna get right down here on the belt tensioner and we're gonna turn it counterclockwise. That's gonna take the tension off of the belt and then we can just slip it off of the roller. And then we're just gonna let that go full slack. And then we're gonna switch it to tighten, basically. And we're actually just gonna take this nut loose and we're gonna pull this idler pulley completely out. It's going to make it easier to get this tensioner off and uh, kind of is actually easier to do it with the thing all bolted up. So uh, the bolt on the tensioner pulley is reverse thread. So uh, lefty tidy, righty loosey. You can actually see it in the bolt there. It looks completely different. So now the tensioner and the pulley, none of that stuff we're going to use anymore. So we can kind of just set it aside. I'm not really all that big on tossing that stuff because it always kind of comes in handy to have later. Um, but then we can just fish this serpentine belt out. Okay, so now we got the old belt out of the way. So let's check out what the difference is between this old belt and the new belt. So unfortunately on this old belt, I don't have a part number anymore. Uh, all the numbering is pretty much wiped off of it and it looks just like a plain Jane belt, but we'll see how it sizes up to this new one. Now this new belt is, if you measure it in inches, it's 122.7 inches. That's where that JK8-1227 for the belt sizing comes in. It's an eight rib, 122.7 inch belt. And you can see it is going to be a little bit longer. So we're about that much longer on the new belt than the old one. So I think uh, that's where some of this confusion from Napa was coming in. They show, I think it's like 122.3 or some weird belt like that as a replacement belt. And it's just not going to work. It's going to be too short. So. Um, you're going to have to get this belt and, uh, I can really only find it from Ford, which is kind of funny because I know that most of the, the belts that Ford uses are actually made by Gates. Um, I think some of them are made by Continental. I could be completely wrong in that too, but, um, it's just kind of funny that, you know, it's like they have that, uh, patent on the part number. Nobody else can make it but Motorcraft. So we'll just kind of toss that one out of the way because... Uh, honestly, I'm probably never going to use it again. It's, it's garbage at this point. Um, so let's get that bracket out of the way and then uh, we'll work on getting that modified.
All right, so we're uh, in the in the garage now. Um, got all of our parts on the workbench. So I'll show you here the the damage I was talking about. So just so you can kind of get an idea how this thing goes now that it's not on the engine. Uh, obviously, tensioner sits right here. And now you can see you have the, the four bolt locations. So here's why you got to pull the tensioner out. You're never going to get this bolt. And then this sat right here. Well, now when I took this apart, you can see it's got a Ford part number. It's got the correct uh, F6 part number. So this is the correct pulley for this application. And you can see there's nothing wrong with it. There's no damage on it. But <clears throat> if you look at this bracket, you can see the whole corner of it has been chewed away where the bearing had failed and that pulley slipped down and the belt was just spinning the pulley running across it. You can even see it in the tensioner here where the pulley failed and it was riding on here. So obviously whenever this thing failed, it should have had this update then, but whoever had it, I guess, chose to just put a new pulley on it and, uh, and run it. So again, these two parts and the roller that goes on that tensioner, we're done with. We're never going to use again. So with the new tensioner, it has the same little two tab mounting provision here. And it's going to go in, this, whoop, it's going to go in this way. Now, if you notice, here's where the problem arises. The Super Duty uses this tensioner, but it uses a completely different bracket. If you recall on a Super Duty, they have the air conditioning compressor setting here, not the alternator. So what the repair is, is you have to take a cutting device of some sort, and they want you to cut this whole section here off flush with this casting. And then they want you to go back through here and notch this back to give room for the new pulleys. Safety's first, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to get crap in our eyes. So now that we got this piece here chopped off out of the way, um, we're going to go through and work on cleaning out this section. And then I'm just lightly going to dress this here with the, the grinder. I think I'm actually just going to hit it probably with the grinder and uh, uh, with a flat disc on it. And then to cut out this portion, I'm actually just going to draw in here with a Sharpie. So that way I, I tend to cut better when I have a guideline. And then I'm just going to go through with uh, with my bench grinder or my uh quarter inch angle grinder and just clean that section out so it's about that much that we're going to be taken out of here and really it's just to give that new idler pulley some room because <clears throat> again uh, this right here is going to mount in like this And what we're clearancing for is this right here. We want to make sure that we have room for this to be able to swing without getting in the way. So, um, I mean, you can see it's, well, probably not really seeing the camera very well. It's almost butted down. I, I have maybe like a quarter of an inch, three eighths clearance before it seats flush. So I don't have to take a ton of stuff out of there. I could probably get away with doing like a half inch or so and making it work. But uh, I just want to clearance it out enough to make sure that I have plenty of room. This is actually a non-ferrous metal burr on a die grinder. And I just went through and cut the rest of that back. So you can kind of see here how, how that came out. Luckily, it's completely hidden, so it doesn't really have to be pretty. It more or less just has to be functional. But you can see now we got it cut back really far. And when we get our tensioner in there... So now that when we get our, our tensioner in there, you can see we have a ton of clearance room between those two pieces. And this tensioner is going to have a lot of room to rotate back and forth. So uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to put this bracket back on the engine. We'll get the tensioner on and then uh, we'll get the alternator and everything else back in and uh, we'll get the belt on.
now that there's no lower idler, we're going to be putting this in. The, the thing I forgot to show you guys, one of the cool things about this, you have this bar right on the bottom. So when you put your breaker bar in here and you twist that actually counterclockwise to take it loose, this bar is spring loaded. It'll flip down and then it'll let you put tension on it. So if you ever need to do the belt, you just tension it counterclockwise. You reach down and flip that bar back into place, lock it, and then you have hands free. So kind of a cool little design. Part of Ford Service Bulletin is they want to give you, a, or, well, they want you to buy. They don't give you anything. They want you to buy a new belt, uh, belt routing label. And this one here is actually going to be the same. You can see really the main difference here is this is tensioner and idler. Again, we pulled that out, but the tensioner has the idler and the roller on it. Um, it does route a tiny little bit different, uh, mainly because you have... The bottom side of the belt is going over that pulley and then it's going to loop under around here and then come up and over the top of the alternator so um pretty straightforward i mean every, everything else on this half of the engine is going to be the exact same as what this belt says so let's get that looped in All right, guys well uh, thanks for watching i uh, really appreciate it i know this is kind of a short video uh, but man that squeak has been driving me crazy and i have just been dying to get it done uh, i've actually been waiting like three weeks for those parts to show up so um i'm, I'm really happy that it worked um you know it, it was i think 110 dollars in the parts and i got them off of amazon um i just couldn't be happy with the way it came out i mean it, it's quiet that squeak has just been absolutely annoying so um please remember to like share subscribe comment um let me know what you guys like to see i really appreciate all the feedback and, and comments i've been getting um really kind of helps keeping me motivated to want to keep making these videos so um not really sure what i'm going to do on the next one i just have a couple of things that i want to do on the truck and i uh, have a couple of the projects that i, I kind of need to get working on um so stay tuned and uh we'll see you on the next one so we'll see you guys